Texas. We have limited time. If I had more time, I would thank you properly for the opportunity to be here and participate in this Right to Counsel forum. forum. But uh, time is very limited. The Sixth Amendment, um, Norm Reimer said yesterday, is an orphan amendment. It doesn't apparently enjoy in uh, the public province the same status as its sister and brother amendments. And I believe that the conversation today uh, enlightens us on some of the things that we need to do uh, to make certain that people who are poor and who cannot afford counsel uh, have their rights safeguarded. So what are some of the things we can do and what are some of the problems? I think the problems have been amply laid out earlier in the day, but let me mention one that we haven't talked much about. And that is uh, public perception. The reality is that the public perception of people who need counsel and can't afford it is that they're not deserving. They are simply not deserving. They did it, they need to face the consequences, and there's really not a lot of commitment to providing those resources to uh, those individuals. Where do they get those ideas? I think that we no longer talk about the concept of innocent until proven guilty. That's been turned on its head largely. And if we look at popular, popular TV, for example, um, it's been a long time since Atticus Finch, but we have had many, many uh, programs, day in and day out, where people form their opinions about the justice system. They know the role of the police. They've known that for a long time. They watched the streets of San Francisco. They watched NYPD Blue. They now watch Blue Bloods. They know about that. And when it comes to the role of the prosecution, they know that also. They know about law and order, and they know what happens in those venues, and they know how it's supposed to go. They know about the judge shows, so they know about the role of the judges. But where is it in popular media that they see the role, the responsibility, the merits of the public defender? It's not there. Now, I'm not up here advocating for a TV show about public defenders, but it all, it, you know, it, we do need to recognize that that's a necessary component of the justice system. So, what are some of the things that we need to do today? And I want to stop and digress just a moment and tell you that when I was a trial judge in the federal system for 15 and a half years in criminal trials, I would start out by asking the prospective jurors, does anybody believe that just because that person is sitting here required to answer these charges that they must be guilty? I can't tell you how many times the majority of the hands went up there's a lack of understanding, really, about the roles and responsibilities of those individuals in the justice system. And we need to do a better job of educating everyone about those roles and responsibilities. Uh, we're all stakeholders. And I, we've heard a lot about money, and, and I think it's a real issue. But money is really a sign according to priorities. And apart, apparently, as we've heard this morning, um, the public defender assistance programs um, have a very low priority. Brian Stevenson of the Equal Justice Institute uh, says repeatedly, and I, I concur in this, that in these United States, it is better to be rich and guilty than poor and innocent. And that's an indictment again against us and our system. What are some of the things we can do in my five minutes remaining? Um, well, uh, some of the some of the, the uh, some of the suggestions or some of the um, uh, measures that could be taken at the federal government level, the United States should provide ongoing support and oversight to ensure that states fully appreciate the federal constitutional right to counsel for criminally accused persons who cannot afford to hire counsel. Congress grant the DOJ the authority to enforce the Sixth Amendment right to counsel. We have wonderful strong laws, but we need to remember that laws are not self-executing. They are not. Um, we need to list public defense as a permanent line item 
in the annual budget. We need to prioritize improving state and local defense delivery systems. The Department of Justice can file amicus briefs uh, supporting the safeguarding of the right to counsel, and they can continue to, fi to, to file those statements of interest. Uh, the Department can fund creative public defense demonstration projects. They can further fund training for state public defense and criminal justice systems and other criminal justice stakeholders. They can conduct investigations into the no counsel court convictions to investigate the extent to which defendants are convicted without access to counsel and the mechanisms that allow this deprivation to take place in the first instance at the state level, and I was a county court a judge for a period of time in my life, state policymakers should ensure adequate funding and oversight for public defense services. State supreme courts can take the lead on right to counsel reform by adopting court rules. Um, uh, they can adopt mechanisms for evaluating attorney performance. They can uh, get involved in the provision and the mandating of more training. Uh, supervision and uh, look at making certain that eligible populations uh, receive the services that they rightly deserve. And we cannot let state legislators off the hook. They have a critical role to play in this process and must play that role. And state and local bar associations must be involved in the advocacy to ensure that state legislatures embrace their responsibility to the total system. Uh, uh, and for all of us who have a stake in protecting and maintaining the right to counsel, we must ensure that public defense is represented in all criminal justice meetings, that we uh, get involved in helping to shape a national strategy uh, that advocates can uh, embrace uh, in modifying some of the um, effective um, assistance standards that are enunciated in um, Strickland uh, v. Washington. And we must support opportunities for law students and, and clinics to get involved in uh, helping in this, uh, this role. I hope that um, out of this meeting that we will have uh, not only meaningful uh, resolutions and meaningful ideas of reform, but we will come out with a commitment to also educate the public, educate the public in this whole process because they simply don't understand uh, and if it's not before them, and if we don't put it before them, uh, they simply don't know. And we cannot leave the responsibility to just the people who are outperforming public defender services. All of us have a stake in this, and we must embrace uh, our obligation to safeguard and fully implement and execute Sixth Amendment rights. Thank you.